The biggest threat we face as a country from a counterintelligence perspective is from the People's Republic of China. The Wall Street Journal, Ratcliffe called China, quote, the greatest threat to America today and the greatest threat to democracy and freedom worldwide since World War II. China is the biggest threat America faces right now. The Chinese right now. government is set on stealing. China, a security China threat. probably poses the greatest threat. We could have slowed down Chinese economic growth. Why would the U.S. want to stop anyone from making progress? Is China a threat, and to whom? These are the questions that have brought us to China's southernmost seas, where military tensions have steadily built up, and to a fortress town near the China-Myanmar border to examine historical ties between China and the U.S. We've talked to scholars who are gravely concerned about China-U.S. tensions. We should not be labeled as wolf warriors. And the relations are as go down to hell. And we've looked back with diplomats at periods when China and the U.S. had a friendly relationship on the global stage. Another set of questions arises. Is the China threat actually the China mirage? How do these tensions play out militarily, economically, and culturally? When I arrived in uh, Okinawa, the, the people did not want us there. And we're talking rape, murder, assault, uh, things like that. U.S. soldiers are, are infamous for doing this. U.S. soldiers have guns and Okinawans don't. The U.S. pours billions of dollars every year in building and maintaining the overseas military bases. But the U.S. military presence does not make Okinawan feel safer. Thirty-one U.S. military installations have been constructed in Okinawa, just 800 kilometers away from China's largest city, Shanghai. And they are just a fraction of hundreds of U.S. military bases that encircle China. Despite the phenomenal strength of the U.S. military, no country truly believes that the United States might use that military power to seize territory, that the United States will use that uh, military power for purposes other than the preservation of international security and international stability, certainly in Asia. They're trying to make, make China look like the enemy in order to continue to promote U.S. imperialism. U.S. hegemony. And so they're constantly saying, oh, well, we need the military bases in Okinawa and all over Asia and the Pacific. If Okinawans actually saw China as a threat, Okinawans would be begging the United States to protect us. But we just don't see that. That I stayed there. I was there for over two years. I started to, to really understand the way we were imposing ourselves on these people and how our presence wasn't bolstering uh, regional stability, it was undermining it. it, was a source of constant tension. Why would China be viewed as a threat when it is a U.S. military that's encircling China? China is the most significant military power in the world now, other than the United States. And the United States now feels that China is not simply limiting its military power to its defense needs, but is actually talking about it needs military power because it's a big country. And this creates the security dilemma. CBS News Chief, White House Correspondent Major In December 2017, the, the security concerns had become so intense that when U.S. President Donald Trump announced a new national security strategy, he called China a rival power. We also face rival powers, Russia and China. 
That report and formally identified China as a global challenge to the U.S. So from now, and the U.S. defined China as a, a, the number one threat to the United States. The characterization of China is different from the two Obama national security strategy documents. They outline a general view of China as a potential responsible stakeholder, a partner, a rising power that the U.S. had no inherent reason to fear. I, in my career, am used to there being a kind of pendulum swing in U.S.-China relations, where sometimes tensions rose, sometimes uh, engagement flourished. Right now, it feels more like a spiral, a downward spiral that goes faster and faster, makes it more and more difficult to pull up and pull out and to restore balance to the relationship. The U.S.-China relationship used to be very different. In southwest China's Yunnan province, a memorial hall was erected to commemorate the period when the friendship between two countries flourished. Bronze statues of U.S. General Joseph Stilwell and General Claire Channeled stand side by side at the cemetery. During World War II, the U.S. sent pilots and soldiers to fight alongside China in the War of Resistance against Japanese aggression. Seven decades later, those brave pilots are remembered as the legendary flying tigers. I have lived through periods when we were allies against a common enemy, uh, Japan, when we were uh, bitter enemies after the Korean War when we were each fighting each other in Korea, when we improved the relations again and became cooperative partners. The Chinese people said the planes which sported a shark mouth, painted on the nose, darted around the sky like flying tigers. More than 1,000 flying tigers lost their lives in the battles. The memories of the U.S. and China being great friends and together driving out the Japanese invaders has stood the test of time, in China at least. And now we are again moving into a period of growing hostility between the two countries. At this moment, the, it's already uh, no way to prevent uh, China and the U.S. Uh, to view the other side as a strategic threat. The perception of China as a threat dominates the U.S. mass media landscape and foreign policy. But what does a China threat look like in the reality? To see firsthand how the perception of China as a threat plays out against the reality, we went to the South China Sea, where growing military tensions have overshadowed the U.S.-China relations. Wu Shicun is a founding president of the National Institute for South China Sea Studies, and he has dedicated his life to studying the area. Every year, the U.S. military flies thousands of spy planes over the South China Sea, and the military ships frequent the region with growing intensity. If China's actually afraid of an American attack, there are well-established military doctrines of deterrence that it can use to safeguard its uh, interests. But I don't think that's a very realistic threat. America是航行自由行動,那麼讓美國提出來,中國有這樣的案例嗎,干擾過美國在南海的航行自由嗎,特別是商船,有嗎?沒有。所以这哪是航行自由行动呢? 
在南浔礁附近近距离的接触。差点发生碰撞事件。用美国的话公布的信息讲，这个距最近距离只有四十一米，呃，事实上是美国它闯进了中国的岛礁附近海域，那威胁到我们的岛礁安全。我们只是呃跟踪呃识别而已。危机管控机制虽然有，但是在特定的时候它会失效。If on the other hand,、uh, China seeks to exclude or undermine The ability of a foreign power or a global power like the United States to operate in international waters, even if those international waters are near China, that's a very serious problem. Wang was proud of his curations as maps of the region from different periods of history. For him, Chinese sovereignty is over the area. Is grounded in history as well as reality. McLaren Company published in 1992. It's called "World Map of the World." It's called "The 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 Map of the World." 这个南海诸岛归广东省管辖。U.S. military spending in 2021 hit 800 billion, and it is expected to continue to increase in the coming years. I think in recent years, the U.S. has remarkably increased its military activities and presence in the Western Pacific, especially around China, on the excuse that. The、uh, U.S. is concerned about China's growing military capability and also active military presence in this region. But I think the real reason behind that is the U.S. is concerned about losing its dominance, military dominance in the Western Pacific. So the U.S. military has already targeted on the Chinese military as a major imaginary enemy. 中国的经济总量已经相当于美国的百分之七十。中国是第一人口大国，中国的国土面积呃也比美国大。中国同时也是全球世界第一贸易大国。我们的国防预算今年才一点四万亿人民币，大概两千亿美元左右。中国的军费只是美国的三分之一，还不到。So in that case. China has no choice but responding by a increasing our military capability and b also increasing our military presence in this region, and that will lead to the growing risk of some accidents between two militaries, both in the air and、uh, on the sea, especially in South China Sea and also around the Taiwan Island. The fundamental problem is. Uh, the appearance of might makes right behavior. It is the responsibility of China as a major power to scrupulously abide by international law. So, America, it is China's responsibility to change the situation. Two, to change the situation. Three, to abide by international rules. Fourth, to change the situation. Fifth, to change the situation. 构建一个预设前提，嗯，中国威胁论，它后面它不只是为了抹黑你，它有一系列一系列的战略和政策辅之于，甚至于还有安全倡议。另外，美国要通过投资结盟和竞争手段，来塑造中国的周边战略环境。他说，这个美国是这个历史上他已经打掉五个老二了，所以美国。他会不断地寻找对手，他不习惯没有对手的。你说美国没有对手了，他的庞大的军工集团，他给谁卖武器啊 ？So is the China threat imaginary or real? Whether or not China is painted a threat, the ramifications of the narrative are real. Residents in Okinawa grapple with the daily presence of the U.S. military. Merchants in Yiwu pray for U.S.-China cooperation that are raking those trade. 
disillusioned Chinese students are figuring out their future other than pursuing a degree in the U.S. China does not live in isolation from the U.S. and like the rest of the world, Chinese people aspire to peace and prosperity. If frictions are inevitable, then the priorities should be preventing confrontations escalating to something more dangerous. The answer is not trying to thwart or in some way try to criminalize China's peaceful rise, nor is it the expectation that China could become more like the U.S. More realistically, it comes from an understanding about how much American and Chinese people share in pursuing democracy and equality, in being prosperous and wealthy, and in being part of a connected story. If China and the U.S. could find a way to bridge their differences when they were enemies, then surely a bridge can be found today.